Hi everyone, a little change of gears from the last lesson I produced on formatting. Uh, I figured there was a lot of videos on the, the basics of Excel and getting started, so I'd rather jump in and approach something more interesting and show how Excel can be applied to a, a more interesting uh, topic such as simulation. Here we have a simulation of a man or woman leaving a city block. Uh, let's picture these blocks as square. I'm going to lay out the assumptions. They're square blocks. The dense distance we're measuring is uh, not triangulated. So if it's two blocks east and one block north, that's three blocks. That's not uh, some kind of vector from the first point to the last uh, hypotenuse of a, a 90 degree triangle or anything like that. So it's going to be three blocks. The other assumption is that the individual will stop at the corner of every block and make it one of five decisions. The probabilities of those decisions are shown right here. As you can see, this is a uniform distribution. You can choose by 20% chance to go north, south, east, west, or sleep, which is pretty much standstill. And it takes the walker one minute to walk each block. And if he chooses to sleep, he'll sleep for one minute. So what we want to see in this simulation is that after X number of minutes, in this case 10 minutes, where will the walker be on average? The best way to do this is through a simulation. Simulation will allow us to test however many trials we want and then tally up statistics at the end. It's the best way to approach a problem like this. So, being that this is a relatively simple simulation, it can be done with an Excel. And even though it's simple, it's, it's really interesting. I don't know, I find it really interesting. So, go ahead and we set up our table of possible outcomes along with their probability. And if you would draw this PDF, it would be a box, a uniform distribution. Right next to it, we have a, the cumulative distribution or cumulative density function. And next to those again, I have the directions. You know, this can be done in many ways, and if you're familiar with Excel, you shouldn't have a problem setting it up in slightly different ways. Over here, we've created the trials. As you can see, I have one to a thousand trials. You should probably go a little more than that, but thousand should get us pretty close to our expected values. As you can see over here, there's a jump from 10 to 100 and 100 to 1,000. That's simply because I hid those rows. The next thing that you'll notice is that for every minute over here, up to the 10th minute that I want to measure, I have an associated direction, which was kind of cleared up in the assumption section of this lesson. The way I get each one of these, I'll show briefly, is a simple VLOOKUP function using the random number generator in Excel to look up this table. The random number that will be generated will be between 0 and 1 and it will be in these buckets. When it falls into one of these buckets, it will give us the associated direction for that bucket. Now, another thing that we should mention here is that a, d a north and a south will cancel each other out a east and a west will cancel each other out. So if the walker walks north two blocks and then south one block, he's only really walked one block. He's only one block away, is what I should clearly say. At the end of these ten minutes, we tally up the counts of the norths, the counts of the souths, and then we get an absolute difference between the norths and the souths to get us the distance he's traveled on the north-south direction. And we get a count of the east and the west, and we get that absolute distance. Then we add these two absolute distances along the east, west, and north, south, 
direction to get the total number of blocks the individual has walked away from the starting position. Now we do this for a thousand trials here and then we can get statistics based on the total blocks. Over here we just take a simple mean of the, of the right hand column over here and we see that the average after a thousand trials in the simulation was three blocks. Also measure the probability that the total number of blocks the individual has walked away from the starting point is a certain number. In this case we want to measure whether the total number of blocks the individual has walked away is less than or equal to two blocks. We do this by simply taking a count if of all the total number of blocks that are less than or equal to two and then dividing by the total sample size. And here we get 36 percent. Now a key feature that you should take note of and I won't be able to show you is that you might want to turn off the automatic workbook calculation change it to manual and this way you can control by pressing F9 the reiterations of the random variables because if you don't everything that you do will generate all these random numbers to refresh and will slow you down. I've turned it off and I'm not going to do show you F9 because that's also the pause button on the screen capture software that I'm using. As you can see with all the built-in functions in Excel as well as other inquiries you might have of this simulation there's a lot you can do from here beyond what I've calculated here. A lot of more insights you can get. You can also change the probability distribution and make it more interesting from a uniform distribution. I hope you found this worthwhile and stay tuned for many cool videos to come. Oh yeah, and don't forget to comment.